Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. <laughs> You've heard this phrase? You've all heard this, right? Or mom, or baby needs a new pair of shoes. I wonder where that started, and I still do, even after researching it, and how that became a thing. Now, of course you know that that's, I think you should know, that it's associated with gambling, really, you know, right? You, uh, maybe originating with craps and rolling the dice, and you have your, your dice and you shake it up and daddy needs a new pair of shoes, right? So, don't try to find any real logic in the connection between this and shopping, but just coincidental that both of these things sort of relate, but um, how many of you guys love shoes? Shoe people in here? Every woman should be raising their hand according to stereotypes in our society, right? Now, I don't think my wife is any exception to that, but she's not crazy. Thank you, Bruce. But she likes to shop for shoes. In fact, I do too. I love to shop for shoes. When I <clears throat> got my graduation gift in high school, guess what I got? A new pair of shoes. Now, this isn't them, but here you go. New pair of shoes, new pair of running shoes, or a shoe, how about that? Daddy needs a new pair of shoes sometimes, too. Sometimes your feet just hurt, and you've worn them out, and you just need some new shoes, especially if you're a runner, right? And how many of you guys like to shop? Is anybody? Really? Couple of lost people. If you have the money, I think it's great, right? That's a lot of fun. You go on a shopping spree. I think some of you are just afraid to be singled out as if I'm going to, like, you know, tell you you're awful or something. But you do like to shop, Yeah. I go through my seat. Jane likes to shop a little bit there. Clothing shopping is, it's, it, but it's a lot of work, isn't it? I hate shopping for clothing for myself. It is just, it's too much work. Now, I don't mind actually, this may be contrary to cultural norms, I don't mind going shopping with Jess and she going clothes shopping, but after a while, guess what happens? Don't find all the logic and the connection to these things, but my feet hurt. And then daddy needs a new pair of shoes. And then I end up shopping and I need a new pair of shoes. It's the best when there's a couch just to really just sit and relax while she's changing into something to see if it works out, that kind of thing. Guys, anybody with me on that one? It's amazing to find a place of rest when you're in, when you're in that state. You've been out for hours and hours. Matthew 11 speaks to a weary soul, doesn't it? Now the reality of today's lesson is not about gambling or getting new shoes and shopping, although there's certainly a, a connection there in that there are things in life that we look for to fill a void that we have, and gambling or shopping and those new shoes can be an example. Shoe, a closet full of shoes is not necessarily a closet filled with the right thing. You remember our closet that we have here, and you remember compassion and kindness and gentleness and humility and patience. The things that we are commanded to put on, clothe yourself with it. We have a different command this morning. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Sweet words from Jesus for us today. Now I think back over the past six months, and even at the beginning of this, certainly when we had the stay-at-home orders in place, and the loneliness that people could feel. Can people still
still feel lonely even as a society gets back to normal? Absolutely, and we're not there yet. And maybe some of you came in today feeling lonely or feeling some way, maybe you don't even know what that way is, and you need to come to Jesus. And we definitely know that that hole cannot be filled with things. Even other people, although there is something there too. Loneliness is something that can even hide itself in the form of other things. How many of you would say today that you came into church and you're happy? You're filled with joy and things are great in life. You feel successful. You feel right. Everything is right in the world. Everything's great. The reality is that most of you may have, but most of the people in the world don't feel like that. Some people may have come in today and they would say, no, I'm not happy. I'm struggling. I'm hurting. I'm frustrated. I tend to be frustrated. I tend to be disappointed. I tend to be mad or sad or feeling empty or discouraged. Maybe you've even identified it specifically as loneliness. Whatever it is, you may just know that something is missing or something is wrong. And today, I want you to consider that maybe it could be loneliness. What is loneliness? Maybe it could be described as an anxiety caused by separation or disconnection. But many times you don't even notice the disconnection because you can't remember a time where you really felt connected in the first place. Now, of course, there's a psychological element of loneliness, isn't there? Or separation anxiety, even. And I think of kids in their development, and uh, you can certainly think of a, a baby like Joshua, and what happens when mom is out of the room, and there is that age where if they're not in sight, they're gone. And it's immediate separation anxiety. And there can actually be harm that happens when needs aren't met in those time periods and connection is not made again quickly enough. There can be harm that happens long term. So many of us can feel like that too. We can go for too long being disconnected, not just from one another, but from God. And God can be trying to connect. But if we're not in, if we're not placing ourselves in the right place and listening, we begin to cause permanent damage to our relationship in a way that affects us for a very long time. But it's like a snowball effect, a spiral effect. And it can even mask itself in things that are sort of described like this. Feelings of inadequacy, feeling empty, isolated, feeling like we need someone to listen but we're being ignored, feeling rejected, feeling unimportant, and you, you certainly don't feel a sense of purpose when you feel this anxiety and separation. And the consequences, again, they do spiral. They become bigger and bigger because as you experience loneliness, your defense mechanism can kick in. And so instead of feeling unimportant or unlistened to, not listened to, you can say to yourself, I don't need anyone. You begin to reinforce loneliness. 
because you conclude something that is fundamentally not true. And when I say true, put the capital T on it. You conclude with that defense mechanism, I am fine all by myself. There are things that we can look to in our life. We can look at each area and examine if we are doing things in our own world that promote loneliness. Something that we do. The reality is that we don't have to feel lonely. And we can say thank you Lord for that. One of the greatest risks though of loneliness may be that we try to fix and fill it with things. Doing things, buying things, and whatever that is, none of it really fixes it. So how do you fix it? Well, I want to give you a couple of points, and I'm not going to be very long today. I want to tell you that we have to make sure that we go shopping, doesn't sound like the right solution, does it? <laughs> but we can go shopping, right? We can go shopping for a friend. And maybe that's a best friend. And we go shopping for a best, best friend. And I've got great news for you. We know where to go. Don't go just anywhere to find your best friend. And so, Really what I'm going to tell you today is connected to Matthew 11, but it's biblical principles as well. And it's about our friends, and it's about our relationship with our best friend. We know that when we're shopping for a friend, you don't just go, you don't go just anywhere. Think about the relationships that you can form within the church, within the body. Now, I say that under, and understand from your perspective in your world, wherever you are, there's someone here that's in a different place in life. And so as I say that, you can say, well, I've got all the friends in the world I need. They're all around me right now, and I have my best, best friend, and I'm set. Not everyone has that. Maybe today you're going to say to yourself, you know what, I really don't have a best friend, a relationship where I can go to and feel encouraged and listened to and helped and lifted up. I don't have that. And if you don't have that, I want you to have that. God wants you to have that. And I believe that you can have that. Is it absolutely necessary? Maybe not. Seems unhealthy to us all, right? We go back to creation, and what did God do? God created man, and what did he say? Eh, something right here. Not really, right? That's an awful paraphrase in all reality, right? But he said, he, he looked at the man and said, it's not good for man to be alone. Now, see, if he had just created a woman first, it would have been okay, because all women can do <laughs> without man completely. They don't need us, guys, right? Now, maybe not. You get to the place where you, it doesn't matter what it is, right? There's an element of creation that says you need somebody else. We need somebody else. And so, when we go shopping, what are we looking for? We're looking for somebody that's wearing the things that we've talked about over the last weeks, right? We find somebody that's wearing compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and one more. I'm missing it. I can't come up with it. I started over, I guess. Patience. Patience. Thank you for being patient with me on that one. Yes. I wonder what the hardest ones are. What, what are the ones that would really identify someone that's really godly if they put those things on? There might be a couple of things in there that we really might want to identify. You might need 
yourself from a friend, and maybe you could say, that's what I really need. I need that friend to wear that thing. And you get it from the Lord, of course. And we don't just try anything on as we go shopping for a friend. We don't just say, well, maybe this will work out. Why is that? And remember, people are in different places in their maturity and their growth with the Lord. Sometimes you can get in a relationship where you get exactly the opposite of what you need. And instead of being encouraged, you become discouraged. Instead of being built up, you get torn down. Instead of being driven towards what your purpose is in life and reminded of that, you get off course and pulled away from that purpose because they are not about what you are about. Their goals are not your goals. Their goals are even not, maybe not even, in, even related to helping or being someone that's good for you. So we have to be careful and not be led astray. I will say this too, that quality is more important than quantity. Now when I go shopping, I always love the highest quality thing. Now I tend to find myself somewhere in the middle because it's hard to afford that. But I think that we can afford in friends top quality. I would say this, that um, going shopping for a friend is, is like a woman in her shoes. You can never have too many. But one quality friend is always enough. I, all the women in here are going to like just smack me later, aren't you? That was a joke. It was a joke. And I don't want to be crazy over spiritual about it, but we have to be sure not to be deceived by the devil, even in our relationships. Because some people will pull you down, and some people even want to pull you down. They feel as though they are raised up when that happens. And there are plenty of those people in life that just are in their glory when they see other people falter and fail. Sometimes you have to just walk away. When you were growing up, did you ever hear this phrase from your mom or dad? Watch who you run with. And we have to go to the Word to evaluate the things that we're looking for. But we know that the Lord says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We should be very careful to listen to that and be reminded that if we're not reading the Word of God, that we will fall into traps. That we will find ourselves with friends and putting trust in folks that we should not. We can ask ourselves some practical things like, do they want something from us? Or do they want something for us? Do they love us? Are they truly faithful to you or just giving you the, the image that they are? And everyone wants to look great to one another. We all put on a certain front, don't we? But the reality is that there is clothing that we wear that's from God. That's not of this world. That's what we're looking for. So we say, Holy Spirit, guide us. Save us from disaster, from bad decisions. Build us up, Lord. And help us to find folks who will build us up and never tear us down. Look in your life. Who is building you up? And remember that someone else is looking to and saying, Oh, look, there's Grandma, there's Grandpa, and they are built up by that person, and they are building up that person. Look at Mom and Dad. They are being built up and encouraged by them, 
And they are encouraging that. Do you think that young people know that? You know that about every, you know that about your parents and every other person around them. We can see each other. And so we're all examples to one another. You can get exhausted shopping, though. And so, on that note, you don't have to shop any further. I really love this scripture.